Hey guys, uh, this is going to be another remake video with a few additions, but uh, it's just going to be an overview on my homemade electric etcher. Uh, I built this myself using some plans off of Chris Crawford's knife website, if I remember correctly. Uh, and he had a schematic listed. I kind of took that as a base and uh, made a few changes, spruced it up a little bit, but nothing too complicated or uh, super special. Uh, everything here uh, that you see, all the materials, uh, were pretty much bought at Radio Shack. And I believe the overall cost came in at around $40 to $45 uh, for materials alone. And uh, just to give you a quick overview, I uh, just got a project box here. Uh, three toggle switches, uh, just single pull, single through. I uh, got a couple... Uh, banana leads here, male and female, for my etching pad and my ground. Uh, I just have a standard uh, 120 volt uh, AC cord, three prong, uh, and then a fuse holder holding a one amp fuse uh, for the transformer. Uh, and then I just found some material for to make a rubber grommet just to kind of buffer that and hold it more securely. Uh, I also put some rubber feet on the bottom, just to elevate it a little bit. Uh, just some stick-on feet. Uh, I believe Radio Shack had those as well. And I'm uh, just going to show you the inside real quick. Again, nothing really complicated. Uh, you just have a 24-volt transformer, your toggle switches. Uh, you also have... Uh, your bridge rectifier, I believe that is, uh, which converts the AC to DC. Uh, and I also had a heat sink that I mounted this to because this does get pretty hot. Uh, so I grabbed a heat sink off of an old television that I had taken apart. Uh, and these are pretty cheap too, uh, maybe less than five bucks a piece uh, if you can find them at a supply store. I'm not sure if Radio Shack has those or not. But uh, as you can see, uh, not too complicated. You just kind of got to wire everything up according to the schematic. And it uh, really fits in a nice little package. Uh, I could probably even find a smaller box to put this in, but uh, this one works very well. Uh, as far as the settings, uh, it's just got the on and off switch. Uh, everything is labeled. Uh, you have your switch to switch the bridge rectifier uh, to give you AC or DC output. Uh, and this is one change that I made. Uh, I went ahead and tapped the center of the transformer. Uh, so I have a 12 volt setting as well as a 24 volt setting. So kind of a low and high. Uh, for the most part, I really only use high, uh, but the low can be used as well. Uh, then I simply have my ground and edge pad. And uh, for those, I just... Uh, Crimped on some alligator clips, uh, actually to both of them, instead of hardwiring this directly to my edge pad. Uh, and I made this myself as well. Uh, and this is simply a piece of 3 8 inch mild steel that I ground into a little rectangle. Uh, tapped it for a small screw so that I have something to clip my lead onto. Uh, and then it's just uh, screwed to an oak dowel rod for a handle and I have my felt pads uh, rubber banded on there uh, for my etching solution and uh, this works extremely well uh, one reason I did not hardwire this to the etching uh, pad here is uh, I wanted to leave an option to be able to use q-tips uh, there is a method you can use uh, where you dip the q-tip in your solution clip this on the end of the cotton swab uh, and then you can use that to dab on your uh, tiny etches and do uh, finer detail work. Uh, I have used that in the past. It does work quite well. Uh, but I think I get the most consistent results from my etching pad. And I'm just going to show you an example real quick of a stencil. This is my Maker's Mark uh, using the logo that I designed. Uh, these are a little dirty, have some rust on it uh, just from the salt solution mixing with the steel. But uh, still very effective nonetheless. I could probably wash these off with some mild soap and water. Uh, and these are pretty uh, tough, pretty stable. So uh, 
you don't have to baby them or anything. Uh, I had these made by Ernie Grossbitch of Blue Lightning Stencils, I believe they're called. Uh, and I think his website is erniesknives.com. Uh, great guy, very good service, uh, quality product, and uh, very fast. Uh, so that's an example of the stencil. I'll show you uh, real quick an example of how good this works. Uh, that's another stencil I had made. As you can see, I can focus in here. Uh, it's very crisp, very clean. I uh, get a nice consistent etch. And uh, this is actually, uh, I could feel this with my thumb. It's pretty deep in the steel. And I use the uh, AC current to darken that. Uh, and then on the other side, we have my logo using the uh, stencil that I just showed you. Uh, as you can see, that's pretty deep in the steel as well. I could definitely catch my thumb on that. Uh, this was not darkened, and that's pretty much what you're going to expect from using the DC only. And the uh, I believe it's the DC that etches, if I remember correctly, and the AC that darkens it. But uh, that's just an example of what you can do with a homemade etcher for considerably lower cost than a professional one, which can run anywhere from a hundred to more than two hundred dollars. Uh, this one I just put together in a couple hours uh, using some schematics I found again at Chris Crawford's website for about $40. Uh, and this may actually be something that I offer for sale on my website in the future. Uh, still kind of toying with that idea. Uh, obviously it, I won't be able to sell it at the cost that I make them, uh, but it'll still be pretty competitive with the professional models. Uh, as I believe this works just as well. Uh, and as far as the etching solution I used, uh, this is it right here. It's just some saline solution. I mixed about a teaspoon of regular iodized salt with about a cup of water, uh, and it worked very well. And uh, you see the results I was able to get. So uh, that's just a quick overview of my homemade electric etcher and uh, as well as the stencils and the results I get with it. So as always, thanks for watching. Please feel free to rate, comment, and or subscribe if you've not already. And as always, there's plenty more knife making related videos to come, so stay tuned.